Hello and welcome to News Now here on M6 Television. I'm Eddie Blum, joined with Jolene Gaffney. And today, kicking off into our first story, President Trump announced this past Sunday morning that United States Special Forces located and killed top ISIS leader in Syria. After a long search and countless hours of intel, military leaders felt comfortable making the recommendation for the raid. Several countries and the region were quietly notified that the U.S. military would be carrying out an operation. The mission was deemed a success as no U.S. soldiers were injured in the attack. The Trump impeachment inquiry is still going strong. The inquiry was brought on by Nancy Pelosi on September 24, 2019. The chaos all began with a phone call with the leader of Ukraine and President Trump is being accused of pressuring Ukraine to investigate his possible election rival, Joe Biden. President Trump still maintains his innocence and the inquiry was voted on on Thursday, October 31st. Legislative leaders announced on Monday that a long-term road funding solution will not be a part of the budget elected off, of, excuse me, officials aim to pass this month. They will proceed with the budget and temporarily put aside the issue of finding ongoing profit to fix Michigan roads. The governor has decided to retaliate by using her line item veto power. Stay tuned to see what gets cut. About 46,000 UAW members went on a nationwide six-week strike starting September 16th and ending with ratification of a four-year contract on October 25th, previously made shifting work back from plants in Mexico to plants in the United States a major issue in the talks. But it is a big, uh, excuse me, a bigger factor this year after GM announced plans to close four U.S. plants. The union is still negotiating over other issues, including wages, profit sharing, and GM's use of temporary workers. Just this past week, a Michigan produce company has recalled over 2,000 apples due to a possible listeria contamination. The possible contaminated apples were recalled in eight states, including Michigan, Florida, Illinois, Kentucky, Texas, Wisconsin, and North Carolina. The apples that have been purchased after October 16th are highly encouraged to be thrown away. Luckily, nobody has been contaminated and has gotten sick from the apples. This past Friday, the St. Clarion had a charity event with the revealing of amazing artwork. A $75 donation was required to attend the event, and 600 people attended. More than $100,000 was raised for the community of St. Clair County to put towards programs benefiting children and veterans in the country. Also, the people who donated supported a great cause and got to see the new inn. Wow, I think that's great. $100,000 donated to charity? Only like a city over? That's really interesting. Especially since it was built only two and a half years ago. They built it from the ground up and look where they are now. That's, I think that's so amazing. Um, did you hear about the girls qualifying to go to cross country? <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Well, let's toss it to sports. Just this past Saturday, our Viking cross country team traveled to Goodles County Park for their regional meet. Bryson Denial, a senior on the boys cross team, was once again named regional champ for his second year in a row, claiming his title proudly. Despite the team's outstanding races and fascinating times, they unfortunately placed fourth as a team, thus bringing their season to an end. On the other hand, the girls' cross team placed second overall, allowing them to finish their season at the Michigan International Speedway for the state finals for their third year in a row. Running onto the football field this year, our Marysville football team has made the playoffs for the first time in years. The team will play tomorrow at 1 o'clock against Orchard Lake St. Mary's. There will be a fan bus heading straight to the game if you are interested. Make sure you head out and support your school. Go Vikings! Hitting its way over the net, the Marysville varsity volleyball team is ending their season with a bang. The team, having just finished senior night this past Tuesday, is heading into their districts, which are being hosted at home starting Monday. The team begins with a bye, and their kickoff game is on Tuesday against Richmond. The volleyball team, having 23 wins so far this season, is pushing for the district title and the opportunity to move on to regionals at Ortonville Brandon. With winter sports just around the corner, there will be an informational meeting for all parents of student athletes participating in a winter sport. The meeting will be held on November 25th at 6.30 p.m. in the MHS Auditorium. The meeting will include an introduction to the coaching staff and a brief overview of the athletic policies, procedures, and expectations. We'll be back with more news now after we are done with these messages. The signs are everywhere. Sometimes you just have to take a second look. I didn't choose this life. I don't want to be sold every night. Human trafficking is modern day slavery and it happens in our own communities. It happens in plain sight but can be hard to identify. They took my passport. They say they will hurt me if I call the cops. Victims can be any gender, age, or race. I was promised an education. Instead, 
I work long hours for no pay. So take a second look. Join the Department of Homeland Security's Blue Campaign to learn how to recognize and report this heinous crime. Your second look could be their second chance. Hi, welcome back. Maddie has a story for you today about the National Heroes Day. Want to fill us in on that? Sure thing. This past Monday was National First Responders Day. In honor of this, Fisher Price, excuse me, Fisher Price relaunched the Rescue Heroes collection with figures based on heroes from around the globe. Former FDNY Joe Torillo, who provided assistance at the World Trade Center during 9-11, was rewarded with his very own figure, which he said he was thrilled about. This is a great way to teach children about our first responders and their work. The San Francisco 49ers have added a new addition to their team, an adorable emotional support dog named Zoe. Zoe is a French bulldog who is used for stress relief. Zoe is the first specifically designated emotional support dog of the NFL and is adored by the players. Zoe receives lots of love and attention and always puts a smile on the players' faces. Isn't that so heartwarming? I think that's so cute. Especially, I mean, even going back to the Fisher Price, like growing up as a kid, I'm pretty sure I had like all like the little Fisher Price characters. So it's really cool that they brought it back for National Heroes Day. Yeah, and especially with the dog. Like you wouldn't think NFL players would need an emotional support dog, but if you're thinking of it now, it makes so much sense. It definitely does. I think any professional athlete definitely needs that emotional support. I know they undergo a lot of stress, so I think for them to have um, a dog, I think it brings a lot of happiness to them. Yeah, definitely. Now we'll toss it to school for more. With the Viking Regiment's <laughs> last score of an 86.8 at Plymouth Canton, they are on their way to Ford Field tomorrow evening. The regiment's performance will be held at 9.24 p.m. with the flight starting at 8 p.m. and awards following shortly after their performance. Starting the marching season off, the band was at the bottom of their flight in eighth, but after a bump up of their scores, they shot up to fourth. Not competing on Saturday, they are hoping to take home the fourth place trophy. Another one of our successful parts in Marysville is the robotics team. The robotics team held their invest at the Emmy dinner last Friday evening. The dinner was run all by the students to show the community sponsors friends and family what the program has done for them, as well as how they've achieved their goals as a team and the hard work they put into robotics. The students worked in the expo room where the kids demonstrated the, robot, the robots, while the others had the cater to the tables for the adults and visitors. There was also, there was also a select speaker introducing other, the robotics kids K-12 through and what robotics means to them. Moving to the theater, the senior play is coming soon. The play this year is The History of Dating. The play takes you through different centuries and how dating has evolved throughout the years. The seniors and Mr. Martin have been working very hard to make this production a great one. Make sure you come out and see the play this year. Bringing it closer to home, our communications art class here at Marysville High School will be traveling to the Pistons facility for Student Media Day with the Detroit Pistons on Monday, November 11th. They will have an unforgettable chance to meet with videographers, social media directors, and marketing directors. As well, they will be able to tour the new practice facility and broadcasting facilities where they will grasp a deeper understanding of digital arts, film, and television. Lastly, they will wrap up their day by attending the Pistons games with the hope of a great win. We'll be back to news now after these messages. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her must walk miles every day for dirty water. But together, we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom that expands their minds, and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses caused by dirty water. Welcome back. We have a lot of interesting tech stories here for you today, including one of my favorites, Black Friday shopping. Great news for all gamers out there. Beginning in January of 2020, SC4 will be one of the first 50 colleges to be involved in eSports with the Junior Co College Athletic Association. The eSports competitions will be held in SC4's Fine Arts Building and Theater. Some of the games that will be involved include Super Smash, Smash Bros. for the Nintendo Switch, Madden Fall 2019 for the PS4, and Rocket League for PC. Good luck, gamers. While we're talking about technology, as online shopping becomes more popular, new problems could be arising. The majority of people now rely on online stores to do their shopping, leaving department stores in trouble. Many stores go out of business due to lack of customers. Though many people argue that online shopping is faster and easier, some still prefer to shop in-store. Now on to some more traditional shopping. 
On Friday, November 29th, all of America will be busting through the shelves of multiple stores. Black Friday, occurring shortly after Thanksgiving Day, is a great time to get any shopping you need done and over with. The event takes place at a number of stores all over the nation, such as Amazon, Target, Kohl's, and even Samsung. The stores most commonly open at 6 a.m., but some stores open even earlier to get people the products they want for the lowest prices imaginable. How about you guys? Are you guys Black Friday shoppers, or do you prefer online? Well, personally, like I said, Black Friday shopping is definitely a favorite of mine, and I'd say it's, it's kind of a tradition in my, in my household, so I'm I never, to I it. never could wake up early enough to do it, so <laughs> I always just said, oh, well, I can't make it. <laughs> well, now we're going to head to entertainment for more news. Hollywood tends to send, save a few movies for the holidays. Let's see which ones we are going to see this year. Movies you can expect to see in November are Frozen 2. This time they leave Arendelle to try and find the origins of her power and save the kingdom. The next is Disney's Lady and the Tramp. Thompson and Therox takes on the world together. Last but not least is Noel. This movie is about Santa Claus' son taking over the business. He ends up having some trouble, so his sister Noel steps in and saves Christmas. This one is going to be a good family movie for sure. Moving on from the big screen to something a little smaller, Hallmark Channel is ready for Christmas. They have moved on from fall festivals and on to tree lighting ceremonies. The traditional Christmas countdown put on by Hallmark Channel started last Friday, October 25th. With 24 brand new Christmas movies premiering, it is sure to be a big season. And for others looking to stream your entertainment, with the weather getting cold, staying inside and watching movies is the way to go. The newest Netflix, Netflix movies to watch this year are Fractured, Falling in Love, Ellie, Bird Box, and After. If you want to watch something binge-worthy, the newest Netflix shows are Stranger Things Season 3, The Society, and On My Block. All these movies are shows are sure to keep you busy during the upcoming months. How about you guys? Do you guys prefer Netflix or going to the theater? Um, I would definitely say both. I mean, I like staying home and watching shows on Netflix, but I always think it's exciting to go out and see new movies. The movie theater popcorn beats everything else, but it's always nice to stay home. That's very true. I'm definitely looking forward to um, Hallmark now that Halloween's over and Thanksgiving's coming up. I know Hallmark's definitely going to have a lot of good movies out soon. So, Well, thank you for joining us today here on M6. I'm Maddie Blum. And I'm Jillian Gaffney. Tune in next time for more news now.